Welcome to Kitchen Made. Okay, so this is how I've been grilling my pork chops for the last 15 years. It's taken me a while, I know, but I think I've finally got it down. Are they any good? Yeah, they're flipping delicious, and here's how it's done. Believe me, the star is the pork, so buy the very best you possibly can. The better the quality, the less you've got to do to it. All pork chops come from the loin area. My personal preference is the blade or shoulder chop. With its fat marbling and bone in, you're just going to get the maximum of flavour. If your chops are too thin or too thick, they will be a challenge to cook. That is why I prefer to have a chop which is around about three quarters to an inch thick. And now for the marinade, we're going to be needing about two cloves of garlic, both finely crushed. To this, you're going to be adding about one tablespoon of paprika. Then throw in one teaspoon of salt. One quarter teaspoon of Japanese togarashi pepper. Consisting of these seven ingredients, not only do you get the perfect amount of heat from the chili peppers, you also get a beautiful hint of orange and ginger. I use this often to replace black pepper, so why not give it a try? Okay, let's continue. Add about five tablespoons of vegetable oil and give it a good stir up. Okay, now very lightly season with salt the two sides of the pork chops. Don't forget the marinade has already got salt added. Now spread an even coating of the marinade on both sides of the meat so that its delicate flavours can infuse perfectly. Okay, we're now flavouring with Herbes de Provence, a classic French mixture of four robust dried herbs. I choose dried herbs over fresh because they resist well the high heat of barbecues. Sprinkling the herbs evenly on both sides of the meat, I like to wake up their flavours and essential oils by crushing them a little between my fingers. Trust me, it helps a lot. I'm using Dijon mustard, but you can use any kind of mustard that you like. This is a key ingredient. It will make or break this dish, and I'll tell you in a second why. Spread delicately about one tablespoon of mustard on each pork chop, and then repeat on the other side. The acid in the mustard will soften up slightly the pork chop, but it really does serve to create a barrier against the ferocious heat of a barbecue, keeping the chops incredibly moist. Cover your chops with cling film while you're waiting for your barbecue to heat up. You can marinate your chops in the fridge if you want, up to six hours. Anything over that, I really don't think it does anything more. You get a bit more flavour and it gets a little bit softer after that, there's no interest. Undoubtedly, the easiest way to start a fire is the chimney starter. So what fuel are we going to use? Your choice. You can either use a briquette or lump charcoal. They've both got their advantages and disadvantages. For someone new to grilling, I would certainly recommend the briquettes. Because of their regular sizes, they burn regularly and they're much easier to control. OK, with your chimney in place, fill it almost to the top with charcoal. Now, spark up with a lighter or match, your choice. Make sure the newspaper catches well before setting down the coals. You don't want a no-glow surprise after half an hour, do you? When your coals are lit, they're going to go through several stages. After a couple of minutes, they're going to start to smoke, and then you might be wondering whether to call the fire brigade out. And half an hour later, everything has calmed down again. Now, all we've got to do with your red protective oven gloves, pour out the burning coals onto the grate. You'll probably notice that most of the coals have got a white ash all around and that they're glowing red. Yep, just like my gloves. I like to push my coals to one side so that I can create a hot zone for searing and cooking and leave myself a cold zone for when things get out of hand. With your grill in place, you're going to put the lid on so that your grill can get really hot because hot grills will not allow food to stick to it. Leave your vents wide open so that you can get maximum oxygen and airflow. This will make the grill really hot. I don't know, about seven to eight minutes later, are we hot? Yes, we are. That's what you're looking for. This sizzling noise is like music to your ears. A little tip is to partially lay down your first chop to make sure it's got that sizzling noise. If it hasn't, take it off, put your lid back on and let your grill heat up for a few minutes longer. I'm just going to see if they're ready to turn. They're sticking very slightly, the colour's not bad, but I think another 30 seconds is going to be just fine. I never time anything, it's just really eyeballing the whole thing. About 30 seconds later, they're coming off really easy, so I'm going to flip them all and give them another, I would say, couple of minutes and just do the same thing we've already done. Okay, about a couple of minutes, we're going to have a little look. They're looking good. They're nice and brown. 
and now all that we've got to do is transfer them to the cold zone where we can put a lid on and transform it into an oven to finish cooking. Once the lid's on, I'm going to straight away turn down the vents to a quarter of a turn because I want a very low heat to finish cooking. How long are they going to take? I don't know, maybe about seven to eight minutes. Okay, after eight minutes, I think they're finally ready. We're just going to give them a, a final flip over. The last chop there, look, there's a bit of juice coming out. That's a good sign. We're going to flip that as well. I never use temperature gauges, but I'll just show you that this should be around about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. After it rests, it should rise another four to five degrees, I would say. Oh, these smell really great. I keep on flipping, that's probably why they're so flipping delicious. I like to let my meat rest on an upside down saucer and why I do this is so that the meat doesn't swim inside its own juices. So you're going to retain a little bit of the crispy texture. Cover it with a little bit of loose foil so that the steam can escape and it won't go soggy. After about 7 to 8 minutes all the juices have it redistributed into the meat making it really nice and succulent. As I live in France I got to have a nice salad with tomatoes and French homemade vinaigrette. Beautiful. Ah oh, that cuts like butter. So soft and tender. Mmm meaty, juicy and herby. Let's get a bit of that salad in. I bet they were nice.